uh, week seven, second lecture. So we looked at consumption-based asset pricing model uh, in the last lecture. Both the CAPM and CBCAPM uh, basically tell us how and why assets are priced the way they are priced. So in the CAPM, uh, the excess return that a particular asset generates over uh, the market depends upon how uh, the how much sensitive it is to the differential between market rate of return and the risk-free rate of return. In the consumption-based asset pricing model, uh, the excess return that an asset generates is uh, depends upon its sensitivity to the differential between the rate of return on the consumption tracking portfolio and the risk-free rate. The idea being that uh, an asset or a consumption tracking portfolio basically is a portfolio that is very highly correlated with consumption growth. So all the shares or all the equity or all the assets in that portfolio are something which you actually do not desire because you do not want an asset that whose value goes up when already your consumption growth rate is higher. You want an asset whose value goes up when your consumption growth rate is actually lower. So if you have to buy something which is like a consumption tracking portfolio, then you will the market has to give you a, a much higher rate of return in order for you to make it worthwhile to hold that in your portfolio. So the risk premium, which is the rate of return on consumption tracking portfolio minus the risk-free rate, uh, this, this differential and the sensitivity to this differential of a particular asset determines what is the risk premium for that particular asset that we are talking about. So consumers' objective of smoothing consumption or hedging against consumption risk and buying assets for that determines the risk premium uh, that we will have to pay to buy a particular asset. Now there was an important insight that came or that comes from this idea of consumption-based asset pricing model. It is something like this. If people use risky assets to hedge against consumption risk, so idea of hedging is basically protecting against consumption risk, then the excess returns that equity in general earns over the risk-free rate should be proportional to the covariance between the market index rate of return and the growth rate of consumption. So depending upon how uh, how large the covariance is, that would determine how much excess returns equity would generate or a particular asset would generate. However, that does not seem to be the case in reality. And this is true given the reasonable estimates of risk aversion in the economy. Rajneesh Mehra and Edward Prescott were the first ones to point this out in a 1985 paper in Journal of Monetary Economics, which was titled as the Equity Risk Premium Puzzle. So what is this equity premium puzzle actually? So let's look at this particular equation, which is kind of a generalized CAPM equation. So on the left side here uh, is the excess return uh, that the market is giving you, uh, or market index is giving you over the risk-free rate of return. And on the right-hand side, it's again basically the same. You have covariance of the market index rate of return with the growth rate of consumption. And here we have A, which, is, uh, which basically represents the degree of risk aversion in the economy. So it's the coefficient of relative risk aversion. So what Mehra and Prescott say is that using reasonable estimates of A, so assuming that like on an average, how much risk averse we are, 
And these measures you can get from different microeconomic studies uh, or people's looking at people's investment choices and so on. So given all these reasonable estimates of how much uh, risk averse people are in relative terms, the covariance of consumption growth with the market index rate of return, which is nothing but this term here, is far too low to justify the observed historical average excess returns on the market index portfolio. So in other words, what we are trying to say is uh, that the market has been uh, giving returns that are way too higher than the risk-free rate of return to be justified uh, by the covariance between consumption growth and the market index rate of return for any given reasonable estimates of relative risk aversion. So somehow it seems like the market is overpricing the consumption risk. And that is actually the puzzle, is that why is market doing so? The market is supposed to price risk correctly, but here it is supposed to, uh, here it is not doing so. It is generating way too, many, way too much of excess return uh, for the observed covariance between consumption growth and market index rate of return, and for a reasonable estimate of risk aversion. Now the question is, okay, how do you justify these excess returns? Where do they come from? Most of the economics research follows this kind of agenda. Somebody shows that, okay, there's a standard model which we all have been, has, have been using, but look, this is not explaining one of the fundamental features of the economy that seems to be uh, the logical extension of what we are talking about in the first place. And then you basically figure out uh, okay, why this may not be happening? And so that is what has been uh, at least the past 25 years of research on equity premium puzzle. So several resolutions have been proposed. So one of the uh, resolution comes from behavioral con considerations and that basically gave rise to behavioral finance. Uh, the simple assumption there is that people do not always behave rationally and therefore it might lead to over or under reaction to shocks to consumption, mispricing uh, the consumption, leading to a mispricing of consumption risk. Uh, economists Eugene Farmer and French looked at uh, 25 stocks, uh, which they thought, uh, which they basically tracked and found that uh, the equity premium risk puzzle vanishes for those 25 stocks that we have. Another way of looking at it, uh, or another resolution, uh, was to look at or focus on consumption risk of the households that actually hold the financial securities and not the whole uh, economy's consumption risk. So if we look at that, then the covariance between market returns and consumption is much higher uh, than what the general data shows overall. So that kind of mitigates the risk premium that we are talking about. Another idea that people have uh, proposed is the existence of borrowing constraints. So if you are constrained uh, in terms of how much credit you can raise, then your ability to respond to consumption shocks in order to smooth the consumption is severely curtailed. And then a uh, lot of those people would uh, like to actually buy equity uh, so that they can ensure against uh, consumption shocks because they cannot depend on borrowing to do that, which creates excess demand for equity, creating excess rates of return for equity. So even the, the variation in consumption growth, covariance between consumption growth and market rate of return is low. The excess return is justified because some of them, some of the consumers might be borrowing, uh, might be constrained uh, in terms of how much they can borrow. Uh, 
All right. So this kind of uh, gives us an idea of what uh, or how to, how we relate uh, assets, pricing of assets, financial markets to the actual real decisions that consumers take. So it turns out that the financial markets are true intermediaries. There are people, consumers, who want to insure against consumption risk and therefore they want to solve the optimal uh, savings problem. And there are firms who want to finance uh, different kinds of projects and therefore they want to solve their optimal investment problem. Financial markets basically bring these two sets of people together by providing a menu of assets which satisfies different consumers as well as different firms depending upon how much is the risk-taking capacity of the consumers as well as the firms. So this officially leads us to uh, the macro finance aspect of financial economics. And that is what we will be talking about uh, in the next lecture. But before you go there, please uh, attempt the second quiz uh, so that uh, you make sure that you follow all the concepts that we have been talking up till now. Thank you.